Hi, I'm Sarah Adams, and this is Cosmic Conversations. Today we have on Sandra Walter as our guest, and she's going to go ahead and speak about a lot of things, and we're going to let the conversation flow. Thank you, Sandra, for being on my podcast. Oh, you're so welcome, sister. It's lovely to kind of reconnect with you. We haven't <laughs> seen you in a, in a bit. It's been a minute. <laughs> Yes, I remember first me and you and I looked at you and then I could hear the spirits of the trees and the plants speak to me and they said mm -hmm. that you, um, you know, you were had come to the planet for a divine mission and that you, your energy field actually affected the trees and spirits and I remember just walking up mm -hmm. to you and yeah. just kind of just letting it out <laughs> so like this is what I see. It was yeah. beautiful. And that's lovely too. So a, a big part of my journey, I, I got turned on in 1999 and mm -hmm. I was getting messages every day and I didn't really understand what was going on, but I thought it was cool. So I started mm -hmm. sharing them, you know, and, and it turned into longer and broader and, and more specific messages. But one of the key parts of my journey was spending seven years on Mount Shasta. Yes. And Shasta, and I, I didn't just visit Mount Shasta. I lived on the mountain in the wilderness and mm. not just like camping, you know, kind of thing. It was just like <laughs> wild and rough. And just that really opened me up to hmm, things that I remember as a child, you know, like mm -hmm. a lot of us. You know, and then you kind of turn it off and it comes back on and when you're ready, I suppose. But um, that was like a pure awakening of the multidimensional self and what the kind of galactic level um, service mission was all about. And I started learning. I started getting trained by these multidimensional beings on how to interact with Stargate. So it turns out mm -hmm. I discovered in... 2012 <laughs> that I was a gatekeeper and I was like I didn't even know what that was so it's stargate <laughs> right it's a stargate keeper so it's someone who can open and interact with um, gateways so we call gateways there's gateway passages where there's certain mm -hmm. energies coming in to assist Gaia and uh, and then there's this huge solar network and the more I got to work with the solar beings, and the Ancients of Days and the Paradise Suns, and it all came together. And they started providing me uh, at, the, at the beginning of the year, usually in December, a whole list of when the gateway passages were going to be. Mm -hmm. And then I started connecting with other gatekeepers and grid workers um, over the years and have built this kind of community of of people that this is this is our our starseed service right mm -hmm. so the and the dates are always um peppered with intense solar activity like we're in a gate right now highest schumann frequencies m flares out of nowhere highest cosmic rays on record during this passage so geomagnetic storms this is like typical for a gateway and like literally when the gate is over i won't even think about it like you don't even have to look at the charts or anything, you know, it's it, but this one in particular, I was, you know, we get called to places. So I had to go to Zion national park, be there for three days, right before this gate opened. There's, there's seven different stargates in Zion itself. So it was kind of bopping around and visiting places that I haven't been to in tw since 2016. So I was just oh. joyful to revisit some of those gates because there's, you know, just giant crystal structures coming up out of the ground and all of Zion turns crystalline. And I was just like, Oh, I just love that, that part of my journey that, mm -hmm. um, you know, that gets to see that as well as interact with that. And then you learn how to connect with that level of yourself. That is part of that, consciousness i can't even call it beings it gets formless that directs those energies and those codes and those rays and the cosmic frequencies that are actually creating these new realms and realities 
So mm-hmm. I can understand why you got the message about the trees because the trees too have that neural network. I had a lot of interaction with Sasquatch. Um, <laughs> yes. Continues, <laughs> which is just, I was, I was shocked because I was just, I, I didn't know that they lived, that there was a whole community on yes, Mount Shasta. Yes. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm camping out alone in the woods by myself, you know, for year for years, you know, it was just beautiful. I came in in the, in the winter time, but um, you spend a, a lot of time outside in that kind of um, remote, you know, in some of these remote, beautiful spaces. And when you get over all your fears about survival and, you know, I was not a good camper. I had like this skinny little nylon tent to begin with and everything before I learned uh, how to do that I was sleeping like on the ground I didn't know you had to put pads underneath or whatever I'm like god my back hurts you know? Us <laughs> girls. <laughs> I, but my camping skills certainly evolved but but I'm out there by myself and I keep hearing things and things are walking around at night outside and it's so it's so cool how attuned you get to the natural kingdoms and the elementals when you're in that state you're alone there's no one around and you 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 get into the field the natural field of gaia that the that the sasquatch inhabit as well as kingdoms and animals and everything and and you start to be able to to differentiate between the sound of a mountain lion the sound of a bear and the sound of a Sasquatch walking around. It's so cool. And then, and then getting into the field and when you're working with the gates and with, you know, the presence of nature becomes very fluid. So you start interacting. There's a lot of tree activation, a lot of grid activation, a lot of, you know, everything becomes, everything is conscious, you know, and you, when you start working with that field that desires ascension, you get into this very natural state of beingness that yes. is just totally heart-based, totally pure consciousness. And it's really lovely to, to gain the trust of those, of the, of those beings, you know, yes. to gain, gain the trust of the Sasquatch too, because he was consistently present. I mean, my first interaction, he's like anything for gatekeeper. And I was like, what? <laughs> like I didn't even realize he was watching everything that I'm doing. You know, you think you're alone, right? But um, but not only not only the Sasquatch um, being a, a guardian for me out there, like he would literally like chase things away, make mm-hmm. things happen, move things. You know, it was wild. It was really quite beautiful. Um, but to gain the trust too for him to reveal because they don't reveal very often. So to be yes. able to see him moving around and when he's trying to get my attention, they have an, a, a wonderful sense of humor as well. Yes. <laughs> so like making selenite powder in the woods, right? By banging rocks together, just old school, right? And, uh, and th- but that's how they communicate. They, they knock rocks together, right? So all mm-hmm. of a sudden he's like, you know, like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, oh, sorry. And, you know, explaining what that's about and, and um, teaching them about Stargate ceremony, how that interacts and everything. And then kind of crossing the bridge between the interaction that I'm having with the natural kind of grounded kingdoms of Gaia and ETs, you know, and, and yeah. galactic beings, which, and on, on Shasta, in my experience, I saw ships coming in and out of the mountain. I mean, I'm there Mm. all the time, right? 24 seven for years. So I, I saw a lot, I saw a lot of, there's a lot of ship interaction. There's a lot of um, uh, direct interaction with higher level beings. Um, My light signature has Arcturian and Lyran aspects. So there was a lot of interaction with them. And like blatantly, seeing ships land oh you know and it's not like a metallic thing at all i've never seen well that's not true i have seen the metallic things but um in my experience they were very high dimensional 
you know, it's like yes. swirling it's more when they, Yes, it's more when they become 3D that they become more metallic when they come down into our, the 3D world frequency. That's mm-hmm. what I, when I see them a little bit more metallic, but otherwise, yes, they're interdimensional. That's my experience mm-hmm. too with them. Like I've only seen metallic things flying in the sky because Mount Shasta mm-hmm. in all transparency is also home to one of the largest military bases on the planet. Oh, <laughs> so I yeah, know that. what's your discernment <laughs> for okay. sure. And I learned, you know, of that seven years I learned, oh, this is what's messing with people. This is the real thing. It also yes. in my experience and all of my interactions, the light ships were indeed that they were light they were energy they were collective yes. consciousness, and they used to mm-hmm. teach me like because even with the sasquatch i was like what i would have these experiences where it's like a gate interaction and i would go up into these high elevations where there's nobody around and all of a sudden squatch is there what i would call a murian um type entities are there you know very tall shimmering white all, all dressed in white beings, you know, they're there for gate ceremony because I'm about to open something that's an interdimensional gate, right? We're dealing with the sun, galactic center, paradise on grand and great central sun, like those kind of networks. So they, but they, they, I don't know if they want to watch. I'm not sure what their agenda is, but anyway, they're there. But even in those, um, even in those moments when I would close my eyes all of a sudden you could, it's like you're on a ship and you feel yourself flying over the mountain. You know, you could see it. It's, it's like standing on a, a plane or something like that, you know, a drone flying over the mountain and everything. And then looking up and seeing this giant gold ship coming in slow and slow, like the most obvious light ship, you know, there's, there's not a screw or a door or anything, you know, it's just, coming over the mountain. I call that one Big Goldie because it kept appearing over and over again um, during gate work. But then having the experience of being in the body, but also being on the ship and Squatch is there. So it's, I'm like, oh, wow. Like they are, they're just in that zone where multidimensionally, yeah, you're there and you're here and you're there and you're, you know, and you're in the gate and you're the bigger being, you know, it just, it started to, reveal um, a knowing of the multidimensional self that I find really beautiful. So as I was doing my inner work on um, getting over what I was, I got completely changed uh, uh, during that experience on Shasta. And then, then of course, um, I'm also an Ascension guide. So I teach I've got online courses and I've got, you know, I was writing every single week. There was a channel coming through talking about the energies, what's coming guidance and everything. And I'm extremely blessed to, to be a conduit for that kind of information. But there's, there's, there's some kind of inner knowing that got mm-hmm. activated. Um, that is such a pure state of oneness that is, it's just absolutely divine. And it really washes away all the drama, all the nonsense, everything that's going on. You know, you're just like, I got this, I am. You know, for Sasquatch, I actually met them in Shasta myself when I went down there. And I was taken to this realm where there was this white heart and they said they'd been waiting for me. And there was the Sasquatch, I guess you could say chieftain or king that was hundreds of years old. And he was like, he also told me I'm one of the um, gate guardians. Mm-hmm. And I had this experience with them. And they said, you know, we know you from a long time ago. And we've been waiting for your return. And it was such a beautiful, beautiful experience because it was almost like a fairy realm I was in with them. And then they said, you know, we're going to send some of our, our guards, our guardians with you. So every time I go to take a trip, like two days before I go to take a trip, a road trip, the Sasquatch, they show up and they're like, we're going to guard you and make sure your road trip's okay. And I had this one experience where I just got this brand new car and 
they told me, they said, your brakes are going to give out and they're going to give out when you see it. And they gave me a vision of this when you see this truck. So be careful. No kidding. I got to my destination just as I was pulling in the road to pull into the house, the driveway of the house, my destination, this truck passes me, the same truck they had showed me in the vision and my brakes gave out. So they're, they're always coming and giving me these different messages and making sure that I'm okay. And it is, it's quite beautiful, you know, but they did tell me too, that they, um, they guard the forest and they guard the, the realms. So it makes sense. And, and for me too, you know, a lot of times the ETs are there and the Sasquatch show up, then there's the angels and the, the different beings. And there's like a council of them and they kind of, circle around me and speak yeah. to me. So, so for me and my experience, I think they're all just interacting to help out with the um, ascension on this planet. And they will only come when we open up to that. And a lot of people aren't experiencing the things that me and you experience because they're not opening up to it. And I also believe you have to be at a certain frequency and just you living on the ground, you know, the, the earth was charging you, it was bringing your frequencies up. And when your frequency goes up into a higher, a higher vibration, a higher alignment with the divine energies that flow through the planet, then those beings, they trust us and they feel that frequency and they would know we're more in God consciousness. So they're more willing to reveal themselves. And that's what I, why I feel there's people having experiences with interdimensional beings and people who aren't. So those who are bringing in that energy and really connecting to mother earth, they're allowed to connect to other beings. Whereas the beings will not go to those who are disconnected unless they do the work to connect. Yeah, it's absolutely a vibrational match. And that goes for, you know, even people who have vibed up to see and interact with masters vibed up to see and interact with angelics or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's always more, you know, that's, yes. that's the thing. Like we, we are that infinite consciousness. And I really, one thing just to kind of revisit the Sasquatch one more time. Um, <laughs> he, you know, my, my specific guardian, uh, he really taught me the ins and outs of telepathic communication. Mm, because they're all mm -hmm. they're just they're not moving their mouths when they're talking to you right yes. when they're revealing those realms or whatever it's so effortless I was just I was thrilled I was like oh my gosh okay this is how I learn how to totally attune mm. and qualify the energy that's coming from me right because there were I mean he yes he had a sense of humor uh, about like because I would I would apologize you know if I just got freaked out about something or whatever um, you know, <laughs> he's laughing and I'm like all right you know kind of thing I'm like all right sorry and there was um, and then he was also teaching me how to attune my consciousness and my communication skills with a lot of the ETs as well so then mm -hmm. I was like all right, you know, because Sasquatch is at this level and some of those folks that I work with are yes. way, way up there. There is absolute transparency. There is mm -hmm. no, yes. there's, there's forgiveness for um, human, you know, minds wandering or whatever. <laughs> but when it comes to like communication, uh, he, really, he really taught me. He was just like, just, you know, just practice. So I consistently practiced. So everything that was coming out of my mind and my heart was aligned. And then it, it just kind of went on autopilot and it became easier to, to receive information too, because I feel like channeling is going bye-bye and it's just, it's just, but we're kind of done with that. You know, we're actually blending the way that we used to in the ancient days, blending with consciousness. I know a lot of people feel like, oh, I used to be a cat or a horse or whatever. <laughs> back in like Lemurian, you know, a million years ago, we used to blend with other consciousness and it was a yes. way of communicating and, and mm -hmm. learning um, from different experiences because we realized back in the day, oh, it's all about the experience. You know, it's yes, all about true. creating experiences and creating realms. And now the Gaia has all these realms, these expanded 
ascended realms for us to explore, all we need to do is attune our frequency to those different levels. A lot of people seeing all the crystalline plasma and everything pouring in and out of Gaia right now, you know, for the last couple of years, because there's more people in the collective that are attuning their frequency and paying attention to the light that they qualify, knowing that the frequency that you emanate will give you a different experience. And that's so like the, the different realities are so amplified right now on purpose. You know, we used to call it division of worlds, but it's just this amplification of everything so that you're revealing this as well as that, you know, and there's, there's no judgment on what level you want to experience, but when you realize it is a choice and a consistent practice, um, mm -hmm. that seamless thing that happens with contact, um, I am, I am thrilled that more people are having that experience because a lot of people, you know, when I first started, who are you channeling? I was like, it's not like that for me. <laughs> it's not like that for me. There's a, a blend, a unity of like my bigger, higher self and that level. And then there's, you know, because we're, we're so multidimensional that- It's just um, a knowing, huh? <laughs> sort of a knowing. Well, uh, it's, there's definitely like, you know, the messages are quite clear and the visions are quite clear now, but it's, uh, I mean, I've been told just the last couple of years, don't ever fall into the I channel, the Arcturians trap, you know, the Arcturians yes. themselves are leveling up into a different state of consciousness. They're like, everything's going. It's not just you guys, you know, it's not just earth. It's everything is up leveling to a different level of consciousness. And that experience a few years ago with the masters, they're, they're like, let us show you how we imprint the field with all the information and our presence and how you look and what you're responsible for. And then we go and we, we exist at this higher state of consciousness as well. We've already moved on, but we've imprinted the field. So if you need to see Mother Mary, you will, you know, that yes. kind of thing. And I was like, I love it. Because then, you know, that's kind of what we're doing right now. You know, a lot of people have technically already ascended at that level. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of projecting into these realms as, you know, a body on a planet kind of thing, a representation, mm -hmm. an avatar of your, of your higher levels, which I find really fascinating. It's all like DNA related. Oh my gosh. A couple of years ago when the DNA stuff started coming in, I was like, <laughs> this is, I, I'm kind of an Ascension geek. So I want to know like, how does it work? How do we do that? How do we do that? Because I know we're evolving to be creator beings. And if you have the structure and the manual for how to be a good creator being, you can literally create collective realities yes. as well as your own individual experience. So we are the co-creators of the ascended version of Gaia already. So we're just getting mm -hmm. to know like, oh, how do we operate up there? I love it. It's brilliant. See, I, I have to agree with you because some people come to me, they're like, oh, I was Arcturian or I was Pleiadian. I'm like, it goes way beyond that. You weren't just that. And most likely you were, you've had a lot of different bodies, but you're too focused on just that one body. And you have to go up into the God consciousness and look down and realize, you know, you're not just an Arcturian. That was an experience that you had. And above that, you come from a very high um, frequency consciousness that's projected into these different bodies for these different experiences. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you probably have been a Pleiadian too, and you probably might have been a Lyran too, but that mm -hmm. that's not the ultimate answer to what you truly are. It's to go above that and look what's beyond the physical bodies that you have taken and put on, just like we put on these clothes. So I completely agree with you on that. It's something that a lot of people I think need to hear too, because they just get so stuck and then they just can't move past. I'm an Arcturian or a Pleiadian when there's so much more out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, the, and those aspects of self that we might identify as star family, you know, it's just, it, it's like the, I mean, the great, 
cosmic representation, right? You're sitting in this, I always see this, you know, people when they're first waking up, they're like, I see myself <laughs> sitting in this council. I'm like, are there 12? Yeah, that's you. It's you, you know, and maybe it's presenting as, you know, a circle of masters or <laughs> it's the whole Knights of the Round wow. Table all over again. You know, I'm like, it's that's you. That's interesting. Actually- connecting with you. It's like during gate, gate work, boom, you know, all these beings show up and I'm like, You're uh, like I'm that's looking for a <laughs> fractal, a crystal ball. Right? Yes. It's just like, oh, okay. You know, and learning that and embracing it. And I mean, and the beautiful thing is there's no egoic anything uh, mm-hmm. any more about like, you know, oh, I am this great, you know, Stargate keep it's so it's actually so common you know, <laughs> to be you, you're like, Oh, I'm a master gatekeeper. It's like, welcome to the club. You know, that kind of thing. It's learning how to apply those skills to your own ascension journey. That is the, th- the thing right now. Uh huh whatever skills you're pulling in. So if you've got Lyran aspects or you were hanging out, you know, and especially with the Arcturians, they don't individuate anymore. They can project that way into, so they visited me on the mountain ship lands, you know, all of a sudden, <laughs> the swirling blue light is coming through my tent. I'm like, oh my God, you know, it was wild. But, um, but they don't express as individual consciousness. They will do that to benefit um, who they're trying to interact with. And a lot of times it's you you visiting you, you know, kind of thing, but it's, it's beautiful to not reject. Oh, I thought I was Arcturian and it turns out Arcturians don't even have bodies anymore. You know, they don't even live on the star, (laughs) you know, they're they're They have learned the collective consciousness thing where you don't have to do that, or you can play with it and drop into realities as you know, the tall blue beings with the long necks. So that's, you know, beautiful and it's lovely and it's sharing information. And I learned sister that this is all <laughs> done through our crystalline DNA, which I'm totally fascinated with right now. Um, I'm actually writing a book about all the, all the information that came through from a class a couple of years ago. And it's just, it's beautiful how every, it's like, everything's built the same way. You know, the toroidal fields of the multidimensional self and the fields yes. around DNA and the way it operates as an antenna for your entire consciousness and how the codes and the light and everything shift just like stargates, just like stargates. It's just like a stargate opening. Heart center on, then your DNA can turn on because the multidimensional DNA doesn't even work without heart coherence. So I'm I'm just fascinated by this kind of wheels within wheels thing that we have going on it's really just it's such a beautiful time living library you know, getting unlocked just like oh, so much information is lovely it is a beautiful time I'm, I'm excited to be on this planet at this time that's for sure you know yeah. the crystalline crystalline system is something that i've been actually very focused on because we have microscopic crystals in our bodies. And of course there was research done that the pyramids are full of crystals. Um, And then I tapped into some years ago, I tapped into this crystal system that transfers energy, AKA frequency light through it. And it's connected to each planet star, the moon. um, And it transfers this sort of electrical magnetic charge, which I term as the divine or God force, God source that flows through it. And a lot of people are walking around and they have this crystalline system in their body and there's not enough light energy in it. And that's why they're, you know, um, they have junk DNA. So there's no such thing as junk DNA from what I was told Um, that junk, that DNA lights up the more energy that comes through us that lights up that junk DNA. And so we can bring that energy, you know, through this crystalline system. And of course, you know, the ocean is full of salt, which minerals, crystals that collect the cosmic energy from the sun, the moon, the stars, which keeps it alive. And that's why the ocean's alive. And I was speaking recently to the great spirits because I speak to the oceans and I speak to the planets. They're spirits to me. They're not physical. Um, 
they're not physical 3D things like people see. And they were telling me, you know, we have gap, we have this cosmic energy and we can channel it through that crystal system in your body. All you have to do is ask us and we are willing to do this and we are willing to help, you know, with the enlightenment of humanity, which the word in the light to have the light within us, by the way. So they were telling me that people are walking around and they're almost like the walking dead because they don't have, um, they don't have the charge within them. So cause recently I was in Miami and I was speaking to the ocean and the ocean told me that she collected a lot of this energy and that she can channel it literally through the crystalline system in our bodies to light us up. So I've been really tapping into that system <laughs> recently yeah. for the last couple of years and doing work with it. But what I think is really interesting with, you know, crystals, people buy a lot of crystals and they're mining crystals. And I think that's just messing up the crystal system of the earth, which is an ancient computer grid system that holds light source energy within it that's meant to channel into us and we're just setting them around like decorations you know <laughs> which is absolutely horrible to me <laughs> because that's an ancient system of when we traveled you know among the planets and we could go through this system and we could go into the realms of energy we could leave our physical bodies then we could come back into our physical bodies when we wanted and we would go through this system and i people aren't aware how this system works and they're not aware how the crystalline system in their body works and why it's important to charge that crystalline system by connecting to the crystals, this, this crystalline computer, which is divine computer system, which is divine tech that, you know, is in, in each, um, uh, in the ocean, in each planet and just allow that energy to come and flow into them to help them with the ascension. I just think people don't know this. And I also feel that that's part of how we, what we were using to send, we would send emotions, we would send um, thoughts, we would send even visions, and we could even send communicate, we didn't communicate with our voices. This is actually a, a very recent, you know, um, us using our voices. This is kind of recent, because from what I remember, at a point, we were just sending, it would be like a movie reel, we would just, we would just download that experience from one being to another instantaneously and you would see the flashes of image the emotions and see like a movie reel um telepathic movie reel and that's how we would communicate more and with um you know we would also i remember when i was on mars and everything the planets were all inhabited we would fill each other's organs and stuff and if one being was depleted we could send energy into that being's organ so everybody all the beings lived for hundreds even thousands of years without dying but they also they would have a 3D experience, but they were also going out via charging via the crystalline system. They'd go into the realms of energy, go and do whatever they wanted there, and then come back into the 3D physical realms. So that's my memory of it. So thank you for thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, and the the tra the whole reason behind transferring the carbon based system to the carbon silica to the silica within the body, um, and why that is like key in the ascension process was just that quartz you know crystal holds more information it holds mm -hmm. more it can maintain frequency mm -hmm. so the whole idea was okay if gaia is going to go here because that's inevitable right new earth yes. is inevitable that timeline if you want to call it that it's already happening mm -hmm. and that <laughs> in, in order to experience that like, oh, yes, all these cosmic energies are coming into the solar system and everything like that. But like to actually experience that in the physical, you know, we'd all be asleep if there weren't a few people who had like that, that mm -hmm. vibration within there. And then you're literally transforming your cells and your DNA into a crystalline based structure. That's why a lot of us, you know, get out in the sun and you see your skin looks like it's dusted with selenite. You know, it's literally yes. coming out of your body. <laughs> you know, I go to take a shower and I'm like, oh gosh, you know, it's amazing. And, and we're literally seeing it, you know, and eventually that becomes bioluminescence. So mm -hmm. if you think that you feel isolated now, just being awake, wait until we're glowing and sparkling. <laughs> That's going to be <laughs> a whole different ball game. I'm just like, oh, this is going to get interesting. You know, because there are a lot of us walking around with that sparkling skin, but it's so subtle. 
you know, it, it's easy to cover up. However, as the energies get stronger and the frequency continues to rise, it's going to be a very interesting journey. So if anybody's disappointed by the unfoldments of the last couple of years, it's, it's <laughs> going to be great. Hang in there. <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah. You no, know, to go back to what you were just saying about, um, you know, when people see the 12, Recently, I had this download about Osiris of how Osiris represents people and all the different pieces of themselves that they have lost or not connected to. It just isn't a story about an Egyptian deity. It's really the lost parts of ourselves. So, you know, you telling me about the 12 and how that, that that's the person, but they think it's something else. But they're not realizing it's their own consciousness projecting yeah. to them that's almost like the whole download I had about Osiris recently. I had this intense download where it was like, people need to bring in these different parts and pieces of themselves so they can return to wholeness because a lot of people are walking around and they haven't accessed these pieces of themselves. And they're like in, they're like Osiris, they're like cut in pieces. And until they go retrieve those pieces and merge them in, they're not going to be whole and they're not going to be awakened or they're not going to be fully conscious. So that was something that came through recently for me with yeah. Um, that. Yeah. And I, I wonder person. too, because like the more, so there's a, an aspect of our DNA that's unified. Uh, there's only one of us here, right? It looks like 7 billion people, but that like the way that's created is fascinating to me, but I wonder, and, and I've, I've asked my higher levels often, will there come a point when we're talking about like, um, you know, solar plasma just flooding us right now and unusual cosmic events and unusual cosmic rays and unusual magnetics and everything. It seems like the stage is being set and a lot of gatekeepers have seen like, ooh, mm -hmm. this is like a realm buster kind of thing. <laughs> and I'm I'm, I'm wondering, I'm very curious as to, okay, but if there's this unified DNA aspect, I feel like there's actually like organic human consciousness that contains those codes. And if, if an, enough of us with the right frequency, like just kind of uber blast the DNA, collective DNA grid, everyone yes. will awaken. You're not robbed of your journey. Yes. That's what they told me to do. Yes. around in like weird spells anymore, right? <laughs> No, you're going to be well, like, fully okay, awakened. So that happens. Yeah, yes. So, so that happens. And then you have like this really rapid fire accelerated awakening because you got to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you got a million people yes, yes. already further down the path that are like, just, just come here. I'll tell you everything, you know, kind of thing. So we're like, right. Okay. So it's a very accelerated so, awakening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we, this is what I was told too. So we're, we, we go in, we, get to that frequency and then we're a portal and this frequency goes through us through the dna through the crystalline system into the mass consciousness mm -hmm. and i was shown you know I, i'm not religious but i do believe there are some codes or everything is encoded because everything's reflecting the truth to us whether it's movies whether it's books everything has a fragment of truth in it because the universe is always talking to us but the rapture in the bible where it says or no it says um Jesus will come like a thief in the night and then everyone will be awakened. It's going to be that electrical charge, that energy that comes through us as portals and goes into the mass consciousness. And people are suddenly are just going to wake up like they were, you know, they had been asleep the whole time and wake up to who they truly are. And that's where I believe the, the age of enlightenment is coming. Um, but that was, I, I was shown that verse and it was just, I had this whole download on it of I'm getting goosebumps telling you this right now. Cause it's, it's, it was, it, it's so intense for me, but it was like when it, that verse, Jesus will come as a thief in the night. And that Jesus of course is Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. And when we channel enough electrical energy through, which is Christ consciousness, which is the divine that's going to channel through us gateways, which were the gateways into through the dna and all that and that's going to wake everyone up so i uh, thank yeah. you for confirming that because that's yeah and I, yes. I remember i remember gosh early in my journey when i first started having like very conscious contact after my childhood period um there were some beings who were like it's i'm like what is the moment like 
And it, <laughs> they, they, you know, they held, held up this big circle. I had some just really fun guides at the beginning of my journey. It was so great. They hold up this big gold circle and they're like, walk through. This is before I started gatekeeping, right? Before I started learning what that was about. And I walk through and they're all like holding the circle like a giant ring. And I walk through and it was effortless and, and flawless. And it was just, you walked from one moment into the next. It was just, yes. And then the, and then some of the ETs that I was working with back then said, uh, because I was like, how long have I been gone? You know, I asked that question. How long have I been gone? If we're family, like how long? It, and they're like, in our experience, you never left. Yes. And I was like, yes, that's where it is. I said, <laughs> okay, so what's the, what's the, you know, the, the moment they're like, there's going to be several moments. It's not going to be like one big Kazao flash kind of thing. Um, but they said those, those moments mm -hmm. are, um, are, are, are like not just waking up from a dream, but it's, it's, it's so instantaneous and it's so rewrites your consciousness. You're just like, Oh, that was interesting. Okay. Now what? Like all the, you know, all the drama density and everything, you know, time being so stretched out and everything, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. It's just there for an experience. And when you remember that, um, and, and I've had the experience of the solar flash too, in December, 2019, where it's, uh, you know, I had my eyes closed. I was laying in the sun. I had a hat over my, over my face to protect my lovely skin. And I was gazing up into the sun and the sun is just getting <sighs> right bigger and bigger, like swelling. And we've heard so much about solar flash activity and have seen so much in the gates. I was like, this is different. And it wasn't just the vision. It was the feeling, the sensation. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, it's, this is it. This is the moment I'm just laying in my backyard and this happens, you know, just like, well, I guess, I guess this is it. Right. My body starts freaking out a little, right. Starts kicking a little bit because it, you, it literally feels like the light comes and just dissolves all density. So the body thinks it's going away. So you have to kind of parent the body through, it's okay, it's okay, just allow the transformation. And it, it just rewrote everything, it lasted about 20 minutes. I breathed through it, keep, you know, not knowing, am I just opening my eyes and into a new reality or what? So I kept my eyes closed and, and just enjoyed the experience, but I felt, that pure consciousness and the experience of everything going light and just like saturating every single particle of consciousness with this frequency. And it wasn't just smothering you in love. It was like, oh, oh my goodness, this, this is it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so again, parenting the body through staying calm. And it turns out a, a lot of us saw it at the same time. Uh, mm -hmm. during during that passage. So we're like, okay, if a lot of gatekeepers are seeing that at the same time, it's it's now become part of the collective timeline, right? It's yeah. going to be part of the collective experience. So if, if anyone starts experiencing that personally, because you can, you can lay in the sun, get as calm and as centered, connect your heart stargate. The connection between the heart stargate and the sun is key. That's why there's so many sun worshipers and everything in ancient days, because there's an mm -hmm. energy that comes through that portal, shoots out to the to the 12, you know, to the to all the planets. And there's 12 planets. There's not nine or eight. Um, yes. It, it mm -hmm. shoots out. <laughs> you know this, sister. Mm -hmm. And it's literally like a fractal representation of what happens in the grand central sun, the great central sun, the galactic center, the sun, your heart, collective consciousness, like it's all aligned. And this frequency comes through that will rewrite your reality. It mm -hmm. just rewrites your reality. And so I, I, can, I can understand why a lot of people are concerned about the physical mm -hmm. when it comes to talking about solar activity or, you know, that flares are too big or whatever. I mean, this, this planet has been through a lot 
but it's, it's not disassociating with the body. It's really appreciating in the now I have this form. Yes. And it's a, it's, you've been given a, a Ferrari, you know, it's just like, yeah. know, <laughs> you're like, learn how to drive this thing because it will show you everything. You know, and, and the other thing is with the, with the DNA, you know, you've got uh, the codes for all of creation right within your body. You just need to learn how to turn them on, you know? We have this ancient tech, you know, even this physical body, it's such ancient divine tech. And, you know, a lot of people don't know how to drive that Ferrari. They don't know how to um how it functions you know they think it's just a 3d physical body they don't realize that we have abilities and powers once we light up our energy system that we um, can connect to dimensions and realms and to our higher self and it's really great this information is coming out there so that people it's getting out there so that people can understand more how the physical body works and that it's just not what you see but it's way more than this and you can tell this physical body, you know, tell your cells to charge with light. I, the work I do, I tell the organs, you know, I'm like, I tell my liver to fill up with light. So I connect it to the different planets or the sun or the ocean or just the, the, the cosmos. And I, I channel the light to my liver and to my heart and to my cells and to my bones. And that brings the, the frequency of it up. So it's connected energetically. I, feel that the one of the biggest prisons for humanity is they don't know how their divine tech works and they think they're stuck in this body when actually they're living in divine tech and once they open up to understanding it and flowing with it they're they'll realize they're not alone and they're you know they're yeah. eternal and this is a beautiful experience and this wasn't this isn't here as a prison or as something terrible and it's really here to teach them how to grow more and evolve more in consciousness, which yeah. is a beautiful thing to me. Yeah. And really, you know, knowing that the body is a separate consciousness, body belongs to Gaia. That's where the whole story yes. about building people out of clay comes from. <laughs> yeah. Body belongs to Gaia. It's a separate consciousness. You're inhabiting it, you know? So when, yes. you, when you feel that, you're like, oh, all right. So uh, what am I going to, what am I going to do with this? You know, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, it, we talk about embodiment, but it, it's, you're never going to merge completely with this body consciousness. You're going to turn yeah. it into something else. You know, it's clay. You get to play. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's a beautiful. Just like putting on this dress. <laughs> uh, play with it, play with it and yes. really appreciate it too. You know, because there's, I mean, mass awakening has been going on for, since the thirties. Oh my gosh. That first <laughs> <laughs> energy came in in the 30s of so people are like oh my gosh i'm so behind i'm like honey there are volumes from hundreds of thousands of years um right in your cells that mm -hmm. are accessible and i guess the the thing is to to remind people to trust themselves too if you're guided mm -hmm. to do a certain thing with a certain plant or a certain rock or bless the water today or whatever it is <laughs> do it do it and watch what happens. That's the thing. When you follow those, uh, not impulses, there's a difference between intuition and impulse. But when you mm -hmm. follow that pure intuition that feels, you know, you weigh it on your heart. And you're like, mm, here, I got the cosmic scale, right? Here's the feather. Here's my diamond heart. Does it feel like that? You know, or is it going to like weigh things down if I do that? You know, you really learn how to attune your divine perception and your discernment for what's applicable to your own journey. And then you really get into the value of unique expression, which is the Aquarian energy. Everything is wildly creative, unique, celebrating every, everything that's going on. And when you get out of the, the mindset of this is good, that's bad, you will see everything completely differently. Everything's opportunity, right? I agree. Well, yeah. thank you, my love, for being on my podcast. You're such an angel. And hopefully I can meet up with you soon. I know we're both very busy doing this work for ourselves and the planet. 
And I'm so thankful to have met you and I'm so thankful for the work that you do. And I have so much honor for you and just thankfulness and love for my heart for you. Aww, so you. <laughs> right back at you. Just, just infinite love life for all the work that you're doing right now. Thank Aww. you. Mm. Mm.